This meeting is being recorded. Good afternoon, uh, councillors and uh, members of the public. Welcome to our ordinary council meeting of the 29th of July, 2021. I'd invite uh, Paul to do the opening character. Item two on the agenda is the apologies, and uh, we have an apology from Deputy Mayor Carruthers, one from Councillor Hart, one from Councillor Hartshorn, and one from Francois. Are uh, there any other apologies? I uh, Councillor to move that the apologies from Deputy Mayor Carruthers, Councillor Hart, Councillor Hartshorn, and uh, Francois have been received and accepted. Councillor Neil, Councillor Cogan, all those in favour? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Move on to the next item on the agenda, which is the declarations of interest. If any councillor has uh, an interest in anything on the agenda that they feel should be recorded, please do. It has been circulated on team systems. It's an important part of what we do. Item four. Uh, there are no items that I'm aware of. Move on to item five, which is the minutes of meetings. Now, the minutes for all of these meetings have been circulated separately on Microsoft Teams. The first one is the Westland Wilderness Trust meeting minutes of the 25th of February. 2021, and we have both Councillor Davidson, Councillor Neil, and we also have Paul uh, Mandrick, who were at the meeting, and uh, I'd invite them to um, resolve, if there are no changes required, that the minutes of the Westland Women's Trust be held on the 25th of February 2021 be confirmed as a true and correct record of the meeting. Do I have a move it? Thanks, uh, Councillor Davidson, second there. Councillor Neil, all those in favour? Aye. Thank you. Move on to the Parks and Reserves and Environment Subcommittee meeting minutes on the 14th of April 2021. These, these uh, minutes are being received and they're not being uh, found to be true correct. <coughs> The uninvited councillor, unless there's a uh, discussion on it, I'd like, like a, a councillor to resolve that the minutes of the Parks, Reserves and Environment Subcommittee meeting held on the 14th of April 2021 and confirmed as a true and correct record at the meeting, at the Community Development Committee meeting on the 14th of June 2021 be received. So have a move. Councillor Martin, thank you. Councillor Neal, thank you. Those in favour? Aye. Right. On to the next one, which is the Economic Development Committee meeting minutes of the 18th of May 2021. Uh, those in attendance were myself, Councillor Davidson, Councillor Cogan, Councillor Martin. Are there any changes to those? Minutes. Okay. Invite uh, Councillor to move that the minutes of the Economic Development Committee meeting held on the 18th of May 2021 be confirmed as a true and correct record of the meeting. Councillor Cogan, thank you. Councillor Davidson, those in favour? Aye. Okay. 
move on to the next set of minutes, which are the ordinary council meeting minutes of the 25th, 24th of June 2021. They have been circulated. Are there any comments? Invite the council to move that the minutes of the ordinary council meeting held on the 24th of June 2021 be confirmed as a true and correct record of the meeting. Councillor Kennedy, thank you. Councillor Cogan, those in favour? Aye. Move on to the minutes of the extraordinary council meeting minutes, 30th of June 2021. So in that, to the outbound via teams, no request for changes. Uh, I invite the council to move the minutes of the extraordinary council meeting held on the 30th of June 2021 be confirmed as a true and correct record of the meeting. Councillor Kennedy, thank you. And Councillor Davidson, those in favour? Aye. aye. Thank you. Uh, I approve that my digital signature be added to the confirmed meeting minutes of the Westland Wilderness Trust meeting held on the 25th of February 2021. Economic Development Committee meeting held on the 18th of May 2021. The Ordinary Council meeting held on the 24th of June 2021. And the Extraordinary Council meeting held on the 30th of June 2021. Thank you for that, councillors. Item six on the agenda is the action list, and it's on pages 7 to 11 of the agenda for those that are. Zoomed in or for councillors and hand over to the Chief Executive. Yes, good afternoon, Your Worship and Councillors. I'll take you through the action list one by one. Uh, Canaries call cycle trail crossing. Uh, we have agreed pricing with Rest Roads, and this includes obviously the realignment of the intersection at Canary Bridge. Um, I have some good news regarding the update. Uh, I've referred to in my report three to four weeks away from starting. Uh, sounds like we've got a start date of next Wednesday to get that started. So that's progressing finally. Uh, here we have a presentation around the council table. Um, be no progress on this. I probably would like to put it to council whether this still needs to stay as an action or whether we want to revisit this another way. Okatika Wastewater Treatment Plant Project Oversight Committee. This uh, committee has been established. Uh, today's um, and the uh, terms of reference has been adopted. The first um, oversight committee meeting is next Tuesday afternoon, um, and we will finalise the adoption of terms of reference. Uh, just an update, we also had a meeting with Stantec this, this morning, who are our project lead on this and developing the, um, the agenda and the scope of work for that. Uh, speed limit review, uh, the this is still waiting for the final um, outcome of the IG uh, NGTA with uh, speed review. But I can confirm the uh, status of the current rollout. Um, we have had run into issues with the sign supplier. So we have done up to 60% of the signs to date. The signs are um, due to be to come from China. We are looking at alternative supply and the transport managers leading that process. Chinese gardens study issues. We had a session on this yesterday in terms of the lake management, having the lake set at 20 point, 29 metres. Uh, the project team are meeting with a local contractor on Monday afternoon to work through that design uh, to hopefully have that uh, submitted as part of the resource consent to regional council. Um, that's as far as we've got with that one, uh, but progress has been made. Uh, regards to requesting uh, Mark Davies from Dr. Speck at our coming council meetings, we have written to Mark officially the uh, last few days. He has confirmed he would love to be on a six month uh, attendance process. So I will put a, an agenda item together and hopefully we'll get him to be available for August if not September. Kamara Gardens, uh, this is built with Chinese Gardens and Community uh, Trust. Uh, 30th of August is a scheduled meeting here at the Council to go through the next, next uh, aspirations. 
Our National Bowel Screening Program is an action there to invite them back to the future state. Once again, I suggest we remove this from the calendar and keep it on a live action setting with the executive team to make sure that it occurs. Our road owning policy, unfortunately, we haven't been able to put a report to council this month because of uh, uh, the flooding and our, our team's been supporting uh, up north. But we will have that endeavour to be um, tabled for council in August. LTP submissions, that's a process we're looking to finalise in the next few weeks in terms of finalising the leaders back to the submitters. Our Madariki Festival has been completed and ongoing now. Destination Wrestler Long Term Structure Review has been completed and resolved at the last council meeting. Friends as a strategy car parking requirements and signage requirements, that has been completed and is now part of the TTPP works. Uh, Rebel Street Trial Stage 2, and uh, you would have seen uh, in the paper, and plus also the uh, updated schematics. The revised plan has been completed. Pricing is currently being sought to be evaluated, and um, this worship has taken the lead to talk to the local businesses and get a good response for all accounts. Uh, LG and Re LG and Z Remits, I think it comes to Martin for taking that to the AGM. Accordingly. I've just added an additional item there, which is not on yours. So um, I've got an just an update on the compulsory stop sign at the corner of Sewell and Hampton Street. So this is um we're organizing the changeover for that to happen. We have to coordinate it with the contractor with the road marking to so mean that is all next. Um, that process will be completed as well. If you take any questions. Thanks, um, thanks Simon. Um, We'll open it for very comprehensive. Paul. Uh, right, thank you, Commissioner. What's, what's been going on? Um, one word regarding the, um, the Canary Crossing with um, Wuhu. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's great. It's starting, we're starting next week. Yeah. Awesome. Just to inform you that we also plan to do the car park here at the same time. So it's incredibly scope. Nice. Right, that was the next question, so it's very good. Um, the um, the um, um, Matariki Festival, I just wanted to congratulate um, Councillor Martin and Council Kogan um, for the program that's put together that was you know, the first year that was put together in, in a really short time. Um, and um, well done. You know, this is, um, um, you know, I could take a punch to Bubba's weight again, and uh, next year will be better. You know, learn from from this one, but um, it's you know it's just such a good opportunity to get out there and do something positive at that time of the year. It's so hard to um, to draw people out of their homes. Um, and yeah, so well done. It's um, put some spark into winter, and, um, and and next year, of course, um, when it becomes a public holiday, there will be more public buy-in um, to it anyway. Um, so it's good to be ahead of that. Um, so yeah, well done. Um, and the um, Rebel Street trial is this on the agenda elsewhere? Ah, yeah. oh, this is a series report. Uh, on the call. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, thanks, Simon. Um, just what, are, what have we got here? Um, just this uh, bit of clarification. So the franchise strategy. It's not the strategy that's been transferred to the one district plan, it's the one sticking associated with it, isn't it? The planning for the Franz Joseph yes. strategy, it's just a box ticking part of it, not the actual planning. Well, that's what the whole plan is as well, it's just the last council meetings or what to council to get that transferred because it's just going to be the same amount of time and has to be done anyway. Right, right. Well, hopefully that happens sooner rather than later. Um, and so just to, so you want items two, 
6, 8, and 11 through 15 removed from the action list. Is that? Uh, the ones that have been read to number two, we have a question with the same. Oh, sorry, yeah. Number three to be completed. Number 11, number 12, we'll leave uh, and 15, and then leave 14 there until that um, process is completed. Okay. That's all right, thank you. Thanks, Omar. It's great to hear that the Kaneri <laughs> crossing is underway on Wednesday. Awesome. Yeah, I think the iwi representation around the council table matter will be picked up as part of the local government review. So I do think that it could come off personally. Um, agree with the recommendations to withdraw the other items. And um, thanks for the update. The um, question I had around um, some of the other LTP decision items, and I sent one through to you today, Simon, um, in regards to some of those smaller decisions we made, like um, changing the giveaway to a compulsory stop. So there's, uh, there's a few of those that haven't been captured as actions into council actions. And it's, oh, so they'll be added for the next meeting. Yeah, cool, thank you. Council Neil. I oh, just, sorry, so that's why I've added the last comment in terms of the Hampton Street, Civil Street crossing. They will, they will continue their work, um, but the timing will be done in conjunction with the line marking contractors that are here when they're here. Yes. Thank you. Yes, Simon. Um, just one question regarding the wastewater treatment plant. Yes. What sort of so they're meeting next week? Yes. So, and then what, what sort of timeline are we looking at for ideas to come? So the, the so the, it's quite a long program of work. So the, the consent runs out in April 2026. Yeah. So it's a three and a half to four year project. So this one sets the parameters in terms of the design. That's what the oversight committee um, workshops can be all about in terms of what are the leading principles. Of um, design work that we want to hold on high in terms of values. And that's what the objective of the workshop next week is all about. And so, when do you think we'll have options on the table? Oh. Um, so, the next stage <laughs> after that will be just validating the, uh, the objectives. So, there'll be another catch up with the governance group. Um, and then there will be, then they'll start des designing. And identifying locations, etc. So it's quite a long program of work. What we can do is at a um, future council meeting provide a finalised um, program of work and what it would look like looking out to the final commissioning date. It would be a, a best guess at that stage until we get some details this one. Because three and a half years can go quite quickly. Yeah, we're, so. <laughs> we're aware of that. And, uh, <laughs> We are starting right from very scratch, so we have no perceived objectives right now in terms of design or anything. Thank you. Council Co. Um, <clears throat> you just a um, few things from me. The um, iwi uh, representation, yeah, I, I, it's probably not significant for us to keep us on that one anymore. If it's going to be a local government review, Anyhow, I think it's, it's nicely in that space. Uh, yeah. There will be some outcomes regarding the representation in that, in that area. Yeah. I um, believe there is a workshop coming uh, to council with the um, with DIA to take a lead on that. Or... Okay, cool. Um, and yeah, just with regard to Ross Chinese Gardens, um, obviously, you know, we're still it's still tracking okay. Unfortunately, the recent weather events did not help matters very much, um, which is always going to be an unpredictable thing, given the climate we now live in. So, um, yeah, as best we can, I'm meeting again. I meet once a month with the uh, Arenas group down there, which I'll be doing again tomorrow, um, just to ensure from that end it's on track and um, appreciate the work that Council are doing around um, getting the resource, working towards that resource consent. So thank you very much for that. 
Um, the, yeah, the, oh yeah, the Kamada Gardens. That's so good. Uh, yes, um, just and just to touch base as well on um, the Western Puanga Matariki Festival. Um, we certainly did have um, a couple of months of really great success with that. And look, to be honest, I think a, a huge amount of that thanks needs to go to Councillor Martin, um, who um, I yeah, can't imagine he's slept very much over the last two months, to be honest, trying to juggle all the activities that went on. And, and um, Nathan, I think you did an extremely great job with your leadership of all of those events. Um, it was it was also great too, and I think, um, profiting on what you said, um, Paul, around, you know, everyone gaining more of an understanding now too of Matariki, I think that for our first year, we did that well, you know, there were opportunities at the Regent Theatre and, and whatnot to go along and hear a lot more about what Matariki means. Um, and I think in comparison to, because I was kind of keeping my eye out on what, what else was going on around everywhere, I think we really, on the coast, Westland District actually did the charge on that whole Matariki celebration. So, yeah, um, awesome work, Latham, um, particularly to you on that. Um, and Rebel Street Trial, um, Really great to see an outcome of our recent workshop that we now have a um, you know a concept plan drawn up, which um, certainly from from my respect I think looks great. Um, it's going to be very useful actually having that concept drawing there now made available to the public to be able to view. Um, and um, also that understanding around, you know, the commitment and the funding commitment of that, you know, not just being something that's just come up all of a sudden, that this has been in the throes with um, the funding towards what needs to be done along there. And thank you, Bruce, for taking the time as well to go along and actually speak to uh, the businesses to ensure that, uh, you know, they may um, a better understanding of what that proposal looks like as well. And by all accounts, that seems to be coming back with really good feedback. So, yeah, that's a great one for us to be able to be moving forward with. Thank you. Councillor Davis. Yeah, <coughs> thank you, uh, Simon. Yeah, just a couple of things there. Um, what Jenny's sort of saying, uh, well done, all those involved, particularly Latham, uh, with that project and uh, also with the Mayor going out to uh, to the street and talk to the people there um, it certainly uh, provides uh, a lot better uh, climate when you get out there and mix it with the uh, with the people on the street. Uh, just in terms of the Hakatika Wastewater um, Treatment Plant Project Oversight Committee, who's taken the lead role on that? So, what do we, well, who's, going, who's, who's, who's chairing it? So the chair is. Uh, Chair of Deputy Mayor Carruthers is chairing okay. on the day. Okay. Um, but definitely myself, um, Scott, are the council officers um, in the lead that's with, and Stan Deck are the project coach. Okay. So most of the agenda will be Stan Deck taking the workshop from okay. Thank you. Thanks. Well, just uh, wrapping up on, on that, uh, councillors, I, I wonder uh, we sat in this meeting here. Back when the Canary School kids came and presented a program to us of putting a crossing in, and I believe they should be part of this final part. You know, where we, are, um, we should celebrate the success that they've had. I mean, it's, it takes a wee while, but that's the process we go through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I think the Canary School could develop the, the concept presented to us. And I really um, think that we should invite them along as the work gets underway to, to celebrate what's actually happened and, and basically say, look, this is this has come about because of what you've done and what I've done. Um, I'm going to finish before we invite them.
Council Martin, no question, uh, backed up by Jenny Matariki, well done. And look, last night in town, with the light up of the town, um, there were people in a queue waiting to get into the Korean restaurant. Uh, it was busy as in the middle, I mean, we're talking Wednesday night. And uh, I actually was in there and there were, I, I didn't recognize any locals, which was, it just tells you that they're coming from somewhere. But it's a, you've done a great job there. And, and the, um, the program with Matariki, I, I agree, next year it's going to be interesting. The holidays, we've all got a little bit more understanding. It's a long, long way to go. But uh, we've got a little, a little bit more understanding. So well done on that. Um, removing of the EP group, um, I intend still uh, advocating for our position, which is that we have two representatives from the Bruno, the chairs, and I believe they should have uh, voting rights. You know, we can't, can't do that. However, I'll be continuing to advocate in that direction, and I'm happy for it to be removed uh, from the, uh, the line. Uh, National Bowel Screening Program, we've been invited to be part of a marketing campaign because uh, it, it's really interesting. The target the group, of course, includes uh, Tanker and myself. Um, and, but one of the things that, that wasn't known was that if you haven't been to the doctor for three years, you're not going to be included in the program. So they've got to, you know, and, and there's a lot of very healthy people around. Uh, so uh, the THB have been brilliant to deal with, I'm dealing with someone called Manaya. He's uh, uh, be, you know, it's, it's a great opportunity, and uh, we're delighted to be able to assist in the marketing. So, um, outside of that, uh, my understanding is we're looking at removing two, eight, 11, 12, 13, and 15. Part uh, three also, you uh, Three as well, okay. So, we're looking at two, three, 11, 12, 13, 15, and eight. Does anyone have any uh, problem with that before I get a resolution going? Excellent. I'd invite uh, Councillor to uh, move that the updated action must be received with the following completed actions removed. <coughs> number two, number three, number eight, number 11, number 12, number 13, and number 15. Do I have a Thank you, Councillor Kennedy. Do I have a second it? Councillor Davidson, all those in favour? Aye. Thank you. Move on to item seven. Uh, Agenda, which is um, a website, it's a presentation, website update project. And Leslie, welcome. This is just a very short uh, presentation to show what we've done with our website and really the reasons behind us doing this. So we've been working for the last 12 months uh, with the project team on refreshing and updating the website uh, for various reasons. The project team um, consisted of um, Diane Mason, executive assistant, a uh, representative from the library, uh, IT and information management. Um, the project leader was uh, Emma Ray, who's our strategy and communications advisor. Uh, we went out to market through the GIT system with uh, um, requests for um, expressions of interest. And the chosen partner was Pattern Limited, who could be exceptionally good to work with. So the reasoning, first of all, for going down this route and having a brand new website was ease of use and the availability of getting to the information for the community and anyone who wants to use our systems. Um, previously, the website was very difficult to search. Um, it wasn't easy to find information. What we've done here is um, created a much better enhanced search facility 
So this is the landing page you will come to. It's not just a pretty face. Uh, we've got quick links. Uh, these were determined through Google Analytics, so we did a lot of analytical work to see what our top hits were. And there's only one item up there that was very high up in our hits, which was not included on the front page, which you may not realise was the actual the webcam. Surprise how many people actually go and look at our webcam. So we've got quick links that are <coughs> in two different places. We've also got two search boxes up on the front page and also a menu which is much more detailed and you can just drill down through the menu system if you don't want to use the search facilities. These were really the main requirements. So again, easy finding information, having easier search functions. And we also wanted a system that we could update easily. Again, the previous system was using a Drupal system. Very, very difficult to update, very inflexible. We're using Umbrato with this system. Much easier to use, much easier to update. And it also allows us to put permissions in there. So with the new privacy act, we're able to monitor what's going on by various people in council. So before it's published, it could be moderated and reviewed to make sure that we're not putting something up there that shouldn't really be going out. So it's another protection for staff in risk management, uh, council for risk management as well. The, um, this particular website as well, um, has accessibility functions that we will be able to build in. We haven't included them yet, um, but they are available on this website. And um, future work, we can actually enhance it a lot more. So we'll be also including the website for the library, which um, will have the same look and feel as this website, but it will still have its own um, <laughs> uh, which will also have its own um, twist to its website with what it needs. And again, in the future, we'll also do the same with the museum, but that's not quite as far along as um, the library one. That is going to go live within the next few weeks, I believe. So I just lost the presentation there. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm just it on my screen so you can keep talking to it. So, um, anyway, so one of the things we want to do, um, yeah, there we go. One of the things we do at the moment, we have forms that we can fill in um, when we want to access accounts and service or need something. At the moment, it's double handling because that will just get emailed to somebody and then they have to start putting these things into systems. <coughs> we can't actually make payments through the same mechanism. So there's a lot of work involved with um, what we have to do at the moment. What the system will be able to do once we cut through um, the firewalls is to be able to enable our document management system to look externally, which will allow for us to use forms on the website, which will um, be completed by um, somebody said to do dot registration. Um, that will automatically go through our dot registration system. On the pop up next, you can pay for it. So it's all in the same place. Whereas at the moment, you have to go and fill in the form, send it off, and then you have to go and make payment. So it's, it's not really efficient. So we've done a lot of efficiencies we can do with this website. So just to clarify, they'll be able, people will be able to go in and fill out the dog registration form online and not have to print it off at all. That's correct. Yeah. And what about signing for forms like that? So when we're online, there's a certain um, kind of um, security behind that. So what, what you do is you have, the way it works is you put your number in, say, whatever your dog registration number is, and then that will pop up with information and say, is this you? 
and you'll have to fill in a few details as well. And the system will say, yeah, verify that's you. And it just works that way. Quite a common practice. Um, so that will really help with us with efficiencies, and it will also be much easier for people to access those services. They won't have to come into the office. Because what when we have the dog registration line, and I'm using that as an example to start with what we're working on first, is the dog tag. You can either tick to say I'm coming and collect it or post it to us. So anybody down south, they don't have to make a trip into Cook Theatre to come and actually register a dog. So I think it'll be much more helpful when we get the system up and then we properly. We've also got a, a capture system on there, which is, you know, the I am not a robot, which you tick, and that stops the system being spammed and clogging up our networks. Not out friendly as well. Uh, if you don't have a system that is actually a mobile friendly site, it can be very difficult to navigate around. This one is specifically mobile friendly. So when you use it on mobile, you're using it in just the same way you're using it on a computer or a laptop. It's really easy to use. I mean, you don't have to scroll across the page and everything is lined up. So it's really nice on a, on a mobile environment as well. We also have a feedback uh, mechanism at the bottom of every page. So there's a little box that says, did you find this page helpful? You can tick yes or no. When you tick that, a free text box will appear so you can make a comment. And that way we can keep enhancing the system as we go along. So in the next few weeks, we're due to get the library website live. They're just working on the content at the moment. We're, although we're almost at the end of that period, it has taken longer than we hope. Online dog registration will be available. Um, but once we get that live, the same mechanism that we use for that, we can also automate some other processes as well. So it's kind of the start to that for other services that we can um, provide on, online. Um, the museum website is in development, but we didn't have a museum director at the time that we actually started this project. But that will work the same way as the library, which will have the same look and feel but it will be tailored to what the museum needs. And into the future, um, this website can also hold a customer portal. So this will be an add-on to it, but a customer portal where somebody can register. So you get your own login to give the system. And whatever service you have with council will show in that portal. So you can look at your rates balances, um, you can look at your dog registrations. If you put a service request in, you can look at the status of that service request, make payments through that portal. So that is quite, um, that is quite a big step further for us. Um, so it's something that we've, we've not gone to yet, but we will be looking to do in the future. And it will save the customer service um, staff a lot of time. One of the biggest things that we have to do is that people may not say how much do I buy on my rates. And if they register in the customer portal, they'll be able to do all that themselves. And then, of course, further on in the future, when the building is being strengthened and we're back in it and it's all good to go, we'll be looking at self service booths as well. So if you don't have a computer at home or you not you don't really know how to use it to do it. You can come in, there'll be a self service room, and the reception staff will be able to guide you through doing that online. And that's our new website. Sorry. Uh, Steve, was, um, was that good for you? It was. It was. <laughs> <laughs> well, I see that. And I can confirm that the text is registered. We did it online. Really easy to do. Yes. Really easy to do. Yes. Right, wait for the discussion. Council Data. Uh, no, all good. No, thanks. Council Code. Um, no, I just, um, I was just going through and actually testing it myself because the big thing always asked is those service requests, you know. So I'm going to make sure I've written it down as a process to let 
the local community groups and stuff know this. It's very simple to follow through, you know, when you want to put a service request in. So that's great work. Um, now, I just wondered under key projects, so, I um, mean, I'm just looking at that now. So things like now the concept plan that we've got um, uh, for Rebel Street. Mm -hmm. So things like that will also be considered key projects that we can put up on here. Yeah, we and then it just means that when if we're out and people are asking, we can go look, go into the website because a complete update on where we're at, what the new design and everything looks like is actually on the website. Yes, and and as, as we say, it's quite new. Um, so what will happen is we will, and we're just working through this because it's new to us as yeah. well, um, is giving the right people the right access so that they can update and then um, our strategy and communication advisor gets, an, uh, gets a you know, notification that something needs to be reviewed and is put on this publish on the website. But at the moment, we haven't worked through who needs to be able to do that. But yeah. once we do, that will be one of the things somebody in perhaps the strict assets will be updating that to be projects as they go along. So, yeah, yeah so we very this week it is there. It's yeah. just the first that we'll teach you that to. Yeah, no, that would be really interesting. Yeah, no, it's done. Has it been done by a dummy? <laughs> <laughs> Are you done? That's good. Because that's what a lot of these websites need. Yeah, yeah. No, this is a really nice function. Play around yeah. with it and do all sorts of things. And the customer portal, so do we have to register? A member of the community. Yeah. Yeah, you would register, so it's basically just a username and a password. Cool, cool. Sounds good. Council Matt. Welcome to the 21st century. Yes. It's only 10 years too late, but it's fabulous. It's, you know, bringing that website, which was completely unusable on anything that wasn't a desktop or laptop, into being usable. So well done to the team that's led this, and um, I can only see it helping the council and be improved going forward. So well done. Oh yeah, it's uh, obviously a lot better. I'm very much looking forward to being able to register my dog and not having to make the trek up here to yeah. find the best Just for Ryan. The Ryan board. Uh, yeah, so use user freedom is the key. So that as long as it ticks the boxes, then um, um, it's great. Um, I also hope that it's an opportunity to um, uh, include for annual plan submissions, to make them more, yeah. more user friendly, because in the past they haven't been user friendly and they've been limited in, 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 the, in the request for feedback and but to, to actually make it a really meaningful submission process I and mean, everything else works so well on this now. It is, and certainly um, once you're able to, as I say, get through the systems and get that our document management system through there, um, we'll be able to create those kind of forms that will allow for that, which would be much better than the past in the past. The feedback section on the website here now. Um, so will that be um, like the old suggestion box? Uh, yeah, it can be. It can be, you know, this is really good, or um, it would be better if this happened or that happened. So you get a free text box that so you can put whatever you want in there, and so we get those those, those messages. So I'm um, sorry, I mean, um, so it's not just feedback about the website functionality, but about you know, feedback on council. Uh, it's feedback on content of the website that we're looking for there, but the feedback to council could be um, through a service, if you know what I mean. So it could be the content on that page. You'll say, well, it would be better if you had this information or got that content, but it's, it's not really a feedback service on council. Right. An opportunity to include something like that in the, in the website you know, if you've got some suggestion or feedback or commentary on the council not an anonymous one 
they want to do that, they can get on Facebook, whatever, have their rant. But, um, but they actually have to put their, you know, put their name and put a reason to feedback. Yeah, but you see, we, um, we do have our residence survey that really is, is designed for that, to actually give feedback to the council. And that's, that's how we would generally like to have feedback. It's quite deep, or it can be quite detailed, but we do find that a lot of residents just, they just give us a, you know, oh, it's pretty bad or whatever, and then they'll tell us why. But they are they are able to do that when they're carrying out the resident surveys. Through the chair, um, I, I'm just sort of wondering anyhow that, because what I like about the service request is that at least even if they use that service request, they will get a response. Like, so, you know, if someone's that peeved about something, for argument's sake, and wants to provide feedback, obviously, you know, we want to be able to get back to them. So if they followed that process, at least it would be followed through and they would have to receive a response of some form. Would, 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 is, would yeah. that be fair to say with that? Yes. Yeah. I think, I think it's something that has got merit, but it needs to be discussed. So, that one. Essentially, you know, um, just thinking, thinking outside of the box so it's very quickly, um, we may be able to do surveys through it because it's much easier to do and use. And it could potentially be that we do our own survey so we have that request, the, you know, that feedback request more often than just the um, full resident survey. So that's something to think about that we can, we can put on the list. Yeah, I think it's, I think it'd be well received. People would have to comment on Council Martin's Facebook page. I'd uh, invite a councillor to move if the end of the congratulations to the team. That's a huge job. And there's always so many pieces that have to work together. But um, invite a councillor to move that the website update project presentation for the group manager corporate services in Western District Council be received. Councillor Adam Cogan, Councillor Neil, all those in favour? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Guys. Move on to item eight on the uh, agenda, which is staff reports. And Chief Executive, very, very comprehensive report, just looking at the team system. Team system, team system. Yeah, good afternoon again, Councillors and your worship. Um, this is quite a detailed report and uh, quite a large report. So I'm just going to skim through it reasonably quickly. I'm not going to take it as read, I'm going to touch on a few, few topics as we go through. So I just have a bit of detail. Um, the three waters reform, um, we have a workshop later this afternoon, but I just want to touch on the significance of this piece of work that's been led by DIA on behalf of the Crown. Um, there's a lot of work in this space and there's a lot of unanswered questions. So we have been going back and along a lot of other um, districts uh, trying to seek further for clarification, particularly around the numbers that have been provided by the Department of General Affairs uh, through their um, analysis. Um, at our last week, we were at an uh, LGNZ conference, or week before, um, and they, they tabled uh, heads of agreement that's been signed between LGNZ and also the Crown. Uh, the heads of agreement was signed with the carrot, they came with it, and it was a $2 billion fund to be shared between the councils. Um, they, they, that fund through or came down to 11, just over $11 million for the Western District Council. Um, that wasn't to be spent on three waters. That was basically a, if you sign up to this deal, you get $11 million to continue your aspirations around other projects within your region or district. Um, so where we are at the moment, without uh, going too long into it, we have engaged with Tonkin and Taylor to take on uh, this work on our behalf. We don't have enough resources to do the deep dive and review of uh, sorts funding for this work from LGNZ who have agreed uh, provisionally at this stage to fund it. 
And this is also covering uh, all light and grey at the same time. So the three councils on the coast, similar to what we did in terms of the initial announcement review, um, they will, the Tonga and Taylor will do the detailed work. And more of that data will be covered off this afternoon. In terms of the tranche one with the, with the money, the $6.9 million we received from that fund, the projects are going extremely well, progressing uh, as expected. There is one, however, that is school, and that is like particular wasteful treatment plant. We had envisioned spending $1.2 million by March 22, um, but that's unlikely to, to occur. So we will spend about 400 k in that space. The rest we're going to reassign to other projects, which we're allowed to do. So we are asking DIA to review three other projects we've allocated. We haven't got confirmation yet, but we're hopeful that that will play out. The issue with the 21st of March and this year, if you don't spend it, you lose it. So we want to make sure we spend it um, and get every percent out of it. Arahua Water Supply, uh, the project is going well. Uh, and we have work started this week on site with a prefabricated plant. Uh, that is expected to be completed by the end of August, which is great news. Uh, Fox Glacier, uh, there's been some delays again in this one. There's some major delays around all three of which projects nationally because of stretch on contractors. But uh, we're expecting this to get away later this year. Just wanted to give you a quick update on the provincial development unit funding. So solid waste, the land, Fox landfill, obviously the remediation was completed in the Fox River itself. The cleanup has been completed also. Uh, and Butler's landfill has started. You will see a couple of photos there alluding to the size and scope of the work that's been led by Roscoe's. Quant uh, Street Extension, 1.19 million. That's going extremely well. Uh, quite a big job if you've actually managed to get down and have a look at it. You can see by the photo how much uh, stormwater management there is within the region. Uh, but the team down there are doing a great job. Uh, Old Christchurch Road, the 3.2 um, million. Uh, but the latest feedback in terms of details, in terms of how much we've actually sealed today. So we've got 6.7 kilometres sealed. Um, we have widened a further 2.3 kilometres, um, and that leaves 3.7 kilometres that we won't be able to get to within this budget. Um, so we've basically got as far as Van Beek's farm in terms of the seal, which covers most of the residential properties along there. The rest of the work will require to be revisited at a later date with an hour and a half Just a stretch far around. Uh, Jackson Bay Wharf, you would have been aware from last month, uh, council meeting of the work that's gone on there in detail. Um, so they'll continue on and complete that last stage and that's what they were to previously. I have an architect this morning, Paul. You've seen the uh, contract that's set up side across the road. Uh, we're in the process of um, re relocating two big palm trees up again on the beachfront. And then the works will start. Um, and today we have a uh, tenders award a proposal for um, the rest of the services for this one. Uh, some good news. We've been one's money again, or part of what's money in terms of tourism infrastructure fund. We applied for seven projects and we received uh, approval for five. Just running through those very quickly an upgrade to the car parking and Franz Joseph. This includes the walkway up to the township, inviting that. Public toilets at Baringa. This is replacing the salmon farm toilets, but this is a permanent place for our responsible camping and going very well. Gas uh, Square uh, public toilets. This is putting brand new toilets down towards the end of. The playground to end by the skate park. Uh, Jackson Bay Wharf Visitor Parking is, is to do with the um, long, well, challenges we face in you know, Jackson Bay uh, regards to the uh, trailer parking and the uh, influx of residential, oh, sorry, so recreation fishermen. And there's a payment proposal for that as well uh, to receive funding, uh, receive income on that. 
you can hope to take a brief on infrastructure development. Um, this, most of this fund is to put a purpose built beach access out at the end of World Lane down onto the beach, some additional parking for camper vans, uh, some bike stands and wayfinders for the CBD. Uh, Carnegie building, that's going really well. Uh, the contractors are doing predominantly inside work at the moment. There's quite a bit of uh, additional damage that have found more to the, uh, the roof space, so we're working through that and sort out the final budget. Uh, council headquarters and Pakawai building, both obviously are linked together um, in terms of earthquake strengthening. Um, so that work and scope of work has been defined now, waiting for. Um, the project team to take to some case right to, to finish the design work and getting their cost to uh, we'll just try we'll see some photos here of near recycle trial stage one has been completed. Uh, uh, one other thing on the other activities, the footpath plan that you've all been desperate to see is, is progressing quite well. The full analysis and follow-up has been completed, so we're preparing to bring report to council next month in terms of the detail and where the speed will be done for this financial year. Under corporate services, uh, the annual report, you would have heard that uh, OAD has extended the uh, review date for the annual review. Uh, this actually makes it very difficult for small councils to combine doing a review plus the next year's annual plan at the same time. And uh, it's going to be very difficult for us and uh, particularly Leslie's team. Um, and finally, I just want to touch on staff turnover. You would have seen a few names leave council in the last quarter, um, but we have obviously turned around some um, quality staff into the department as well, including Scott. <laughs> Have you had any questions, Your Worship? You oh, sorry, one other topic is sorry, Your Worship. Um, I have got an update in terms of um, West Coast Regional Council's. Seawall and riddle protection work. So I met with them along with our planning manager on Tuesday. Um, I've asked for them to provide me a brief. So they've actually contracted Becca to do the resource consent and the design work for the seawall, particularly. Um, and that's a three month process. So you don't expect work to start there anytime soon. But um, they are proposing to go down the fast track consenting process uh, through the Minister of Environment. Um, first of all, they have to apply for that to happen, and then they have to actually go through that. This obviously is, can only be challenged on acts of law, not so much what content or like design actually is. Um, and in terms of the river protection works, the um, work through their prioritisation of where there is, they're going to focus on first, and between Canary Bridge and the dairy company is the priority area, it's the lowest line, and then it'll be Above the canary bridge, through to the canary, with the second priority piece of work. Oh. oh gosh, there's huge, isn't it? So much there to comment on. Um, the um, three waters, my view, my view would be the two descendant. The, um, the, not the money. No. I don't think we get a million dollars to be returned soon now. I think that's the return to see the rush get the But the you know, I mean, this, the government has got an agenda for this three bills, which we know I mean, they they said as soon as they run into headwinds, they pull out another um card out of the back pocket. Or another dollar of money. The printing machine has been flat out and one to printing money. But um, what what really concerns me with that is that in that agreement with the um, local government of New Zealand, um, that they're going to use all their powers of persuasion, of course, to convince or worse. Um, Councils to um, to get on get on board with it, um, and it's this all all in clause which the government is pondering 
that's the worry for me because um, I, and I think that's where it's going to be telling because it all means the government's going to decree and they're going to say, well, and the child's parent is so now it's going to be you're all in and this is the way it's going to be. So it won't be three waters, it'll be three bills in the future because we'll have the bill for the rate of the normal council rates bill, the regional council rates bill, and the water rates bill probably is as much. You know, I just uh, the whole thing just leaves me cold. And it's all for something that's um it's hard to hard to understand here where our water is is so clear and it's not like those misleading mischievous ads on TV. Um, I just don't, 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 I don't buy it. Um, I ask on the, um, um, the old Christchurch Road extension, mm -hmm. that's really unfortunate that it's coming short, whereas the, um, the, the no alternative like it was with the Jackson Bay um, work where the contractor found further down the track that there was all that extra work that needed to be done and so to be able to finish the job properly as was promised in the first place with the shovel ready business um, and they, uh, they come up with some more money which was grand and no opportunity for them to do that with uh, so we had that conversation with, um, through Warren Gilbertson about all of our additional projects uh, in terms of additional funding. So that still a work in progress. I can't say confirm if there's anything available for us at this stage. The fact that we've formed the rest of the, the 2.7 kilometres, or means it'll be easily sealed once we get uh, some additional funding. Just through the chairs at 2.7. Stays three kilometers of yeah, oh, three point seven. Sorry, so three point seven. Yeah. Oh no, so sorry. Let me clarify. We've developed a further two point three beyond we have already sealed, right. which can be sealed once we get funded. So it's already developed, ready to do it. It's a stage that was never envisaged. It's what I understand. Not exactly stage three. Um. Um, but that is good though that um, I see here that the additional funding has been approved to the um, structural pilot works at Jackson Bay um, after, this, after the presentation we had from yes. So that's good. That shows that they can. Oh, no, so no, we're, we're funding that. Oh, well, oh, oh, that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> so, with the retrospective, we're trying to still get the uh, uh, funder. Uh, Bear in mind, for all the last presentation, that was an unbudgeted extension. Yes. But uh, the caveat there was we would try and get funding to cover it, but we were still working on that. Oh, oh I misread that, sorry. Um, I, I, with where it says additional funding has been approved to complete essential. By us. Uh, um, the bridging funding is very Oh, okay. Um, I won't quite say that from his own. Can you that one? <laughs> the um, tourist infrastructure fund um, projects um, mostly um, thumbs up. Um, not thumbs up for me on the Jackson Bay um, parking um, for the trail park, the, the boat trails, um, which is basically rewarding. Um, these ones that come in from these cowboys that come in from central Otago and, and places, um, especially over summertime, um, bringing everything with them, um, spend nothing, um, and head out with um, um, with the car weighted down with all their power and crayfish, um, and um, so that then these cowboys are being rewarded, and um, I don't agree with it. It'll tidy, certainly tidy it up and good luck with getting a bit of money out of them. I suppose that's the main point is in terms of marshalling them into a congregated area which of course the focus rather than parking randomly everywhere. And um, the intention is to put pay, pay for parking. 
And we can put whatever number you know what I mean? The white um, tower um, building work, um, a little bit concerned that the um, more structural work is required and this will come at a, at a greater cost to the council. And of course, the 64,000 questions, how much? Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, the, given that we had a fairly optimistic, shall we say, report when that thing was purchased, it was going to cost by the law, and now it's going all well, already, it's going to cost substantially more with a greater, a, yeah, a greater structural work required. Um, and and in concluding about uh, based on whether or not the um, uh, yeah, the, the staffing, etc. So, just to allude to what that refers to, if we are going to put additional load, for example, upstairs, that's, that's not earthquake strengthening. So, what we're doing is, it is earthquake strengthening, but it's to do with the future use of the, of the building, not if we bought it and had to fix up the existing use. So, the intention there could be. A lot of tons of books sitting up on our stairs in terms of library function, etc., that need to be catered for. So we'll finalise what that potentially may um, look like, and now they're designing it to that capacity. Right. Okay, so um, yeah, I, I just do hope that uh, uh, the budget for that is, is, um, is kept in check for Pokemon by Tana. I wouldn't. Like to see um, it continually following. Yeah. Um, and that was all for me. Thank you. Councillor Kennedy. Hey, thanks, Simon. A lot in there. Um, I suppose we're going to be talking about three waters uh, later on. Um, I get the feeling at some point we're just going to have to take our medicine and. It's just going to happen, as Paul perhaps alluded to. Uh, what else have I got here? <laughs> yeah. Um, the, so obviously upgrading the Franz Joseph car parking area, the one down by the heliport, is it? And the flood zone. Oh, yeah. No, that's cool. Um, the Parky Waitara building, yeah, I've got the same concerns as, as Paul. Oh, I um I really do worry about it. I, even a, a name change would be apt. And what did I have here? Money Kaurua, I think um would be the best one if you want to look that up on your dictionary. Um, <laughs> the last thing is the um oh and thanks for the update about the um, West Coast Regional Council and their shovel ready project, which really isn't. Um, it's a, another question would be about France too and that shovel ready project which currently hasn't turned over a single stone. Um, yeah. Thank you. Council Mark. Right. We've got time. <laughs> Three waters. I think we have to have a really serious discussion about that today as part of that workshop because um, there's a huge amount of reform that we need to get our heads around as a council um, because there's a lot on this and a lot of risk, I think, for our council and our residents. So I'm looking forward to that discussion. Um, just scrolling through, well done, Simon, on the, um, the capital works projects that are underway. That's, um, it's really awesome to see. Um, I'm just want to stop and talk about the, as I scroll, the um, council headquarters in Pakiwaitara. I'm wondering whether it would be useful for us to receive costings on what it would actually cost to bring the council headquarters to 100% MBS. Um, I'm just concerned that 67% may be elevated at some stage in the future anyway. The requirement to go additional and appreciate that um, you know there's scoping work happening at the moment but both of these buildings seem like they are key buildings for the 
district and it would be a shame for the, you know, it would be good to know the facts on what the difference cost actually is and the um, expectation. Just on the top of the head, it's going to be, would be quite substantial to go down to because it had to uh, mess with the foundations of this building, which wouldn't be uh, an easy job. Through the way it's been built. Yeah, I also throw in the mix that we haven't yet commenced the planning or work for our EOC, and it concerns me we don't have an IL, a, you know, I'm sorry, we haven't got a, a building that we can actually run a control centre out of. And it's all, it's all very apt at the moment, you know, with what's happened in Bola, the fact that, you know, running. <laughs> running an EOC out of a building that, um, you know, if it was an earthquake, for example, at 67% loading may not result in death, but may result in the building being, you know, a casualty. So we have the building that project in here, but we have some work on design with EOC. So we've got a working group working on that at the moment, assigned to the manager towards that. It's underway, um, but we don't have anything to say with the county. Um, Okay, that's probably important to know because I think that's in the mix. It's like if these if these two buildings, the key civil buildings, are not able to be used, um, have we got a building that's a hundred percent of our four, you know, and, and a headquarters that can maintain an EOC at the airport? Sort of well, is that the intent to have a building that can house staff additional to EOC? Yeah, we're talking and, about other in sorry to sound doom and gloom but sometimes like it might be a couple of million dollars more to strengthen it to 100 percent. but what would the cost of it be if it was a you know critical failure of the building, to clear the building, to have to build a new building. You know, I don't know. I just, I think I'd feel more comfortable knowing that for an estimate of this, we'd be able to take to 100%, particularly for this building. And um, as we're about to embark on the strengthening projects for them, I'm, I guess you've got that, those estimates, but. Um, we were struggling to get the original 67, so um, I haven't got 100% at the moment. So I'll have a talk to Scott and see if we can progress that discussion. Mm. We, yes, we may be required in the future, but that 67 is an arbitrary number that the government might move it to 80%. You know. It would take a while for that to change. Yeah, that's that, right. That, that would affect a lot of buildings in New Zealand. Huge amount. We're not even affordable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. It's just we've, we're here thinking of the next 30, 50 years. So, okay, enough on that. Scrolling, still scrolling through this long report. Thank you. Looking forward to that footpath body of work. That will be very interesting. Is that coming with the recommendation around works proceeding? <laughs> so, the intention is to, so we've done the full analysis. The team's done the priority list. Um, and the costing needs to be pulled together around it, and then obviously location. So that's to be led by Scott. We do anticipate it to be fully you know, scoped in terms of all this. So we'll receive something that says there's 100 footpaths were identified as yeah. ones that need doing, and here's our 12 month work plan to address these 100 footpaths. It's all the same. Very black and white, and yeah. people can see, you know, John Smith Street is. Yeah. You know, in November, sort of thing. And we've also, we will be taking the um, feedback from Samara on the right to ensure aspirations that that's being reviewed. Yeah, no, that's, that's really good. Yeah, this is concerning about the annual report and the government's um, direction around that. I'm pleased we've written to OIG around that. Um, okay, scrolling, scrolling. Um, be interesting outside of this meeting, get an update on some of these new roles and how, how they um, contribute to our council. It'd be really cool to understand. I think like we've got new people and new jobs like customer service team leader and you know what's what's different now that they're on board would be really cool, I think, to know. Um, but yeah, the big one really is this um, three waters review and reform and it's, it's gonna take- local government as well, it's 
it's massive and no stone at the end of the spot. You know, the, <laughs> no stone at the end of the spot. Let's turn every stone. Um, what, what worries me is we've actually got to do our knitting as well. And, you know, a day to day running of the council and the district and all of this stuff is, is taking an element of us and our senior leadership team focusing on that. And it's critical we do that. But I'm just wondering around resourcing and capacity. Yeah, it's the reason we decided to come from to help us. They were part of the RFI work anyway, so they know our numbers are ready. So we've got approval from LGNZ that we can use them. So um, Chris Burgess, who's doing the workshop, has been already discussing with LGNZ. Um, in fact, they are very pleased that we're taking this, this step and they want to use our cognitive as a blueprint for how it should be done by the councils, which is quite interesting. I think we will fast, fast followers rather than leaders. Leaders, that's good. It was very clear at the, the government conference when the minister and the prime minister spoke, and they were asked about opt in, opt out. It, it's very clear that opt out is off the table. It's not an option. Yeah. So that's going to be something we have to consider our position on, I think, as an allegiance of councils through his worship. <laughs> because, you know, it was that it was very, very clear questions from the floor through this messaging system to the commentators up on the stage who were him seeing it around people, other councils expressing concern around, can we opt out? And it was, wasn't a clear, no, you can't, but listening to the dialogue, it was, no, you can't. So it's huge for us to get our heads around. Mm. Thank you for your report, Simon, and the team. Council yeah. Um, Some of the comments, everyone else. Thanks, Simon. Yeah, big concerns around Paki Waitawa, and at what point do we go, oh, we can't spend that much money on it? Do we have further discussions on it? Um, and an agreement has now been reached on the options for the use of the building. So was that not clear before? Um, uh, it, was, it wasn't crystal clear in terms of, you know, exactly how it's going to be formed within that day and the design elements that go with it. That's where we have landed now. But the actual users are going to be what was originally intended? Yes. Yeah, okay. Um, what part? A programme in August. That is so exciting. I really look forward to it. Thank you, Nathan, on that one. Very exciting about what <laughs> no, not about what about the program for them. I look forward to the workshop this afternoon to talk more about sea waters. And just concerned about the issues for the finance team and the workload. So I noticed there's one new person in finance. Is that going to be enough to cover the needs? <coughs> um, it's not actually a new person. Um, it's just that we're replacing, so we haven't got any of the Yeah. Mm. On BAU and on a normal year, we would have the staff that we require. Um, but it's going to have an overlap because of what's happening with audit. And I don't blame Audit New Zealand, that's just made that clear. Um, they have resourcing issues because the borders are closed, and that's that's the way it is. Um, but it does put us at a particular um, disadvantage because we are a smaller council and smaller team, and that into do two big jobs all at the same time that requires the attention of the team. So is there the potential to get someone in, as a contractor to do some of that or? It's difficult because by the time you've got somebody and then you've got to train them on the systems and where the information is and you've, you're kind of done anyway. So, and it takes your time as well. So it's a big, it's still one the other, you know, what do I not think she's best, but not really. That's <laughs> outsourced to other people in the country that know that system, or still not? Because it does come up, doesn't it, sort of annually, yeah. that there's too much work. Yeah, but with our, well, we step back a bit, with our IMAS system, we're in a really good place, and it's really helping us to be, uh, have less workload. 
um, to be on challenge, so it's speeding things up. But it's just the fact that this particular um, audit will be at exactly right. the same time as that are being required to set up the annual plan process yes. and to begin with that. So it's, it's two jobs all at the same time, which we would normally move from one and into the other. And of course, it does put us at a back foot as well for the annual plan because we can't get our own imbalances until we publish our audited annual report. And we can't do that till later on in the process because it won't have been audited. So it, it's it's kind of that kind of thing. But generally now we're in a better place because we've got our systems in place and really good systems. Um, it's it's just the timing this time. But it may have to acknowledge that the challenges there, I guess. And yeah, please pass on well control when you start. Good mm. idea. Um, I just want to obviously because it's just bigger than being here really the whole free waters thing I, I you know I'm just really struggling with the fact that you know we've got over 100 million that we own in assets and government are going to take that off us and basically give us 11, point, 11 million back here we are already a small struggling council in New Zealand. Um, so, yeah, I'm just, you know, I mean, I really want to see what they see as the significant advantages of, you know, changing all of these systems over um, because financially I don't think, well, I can't see how they are going to benefit Council. I mean, they might have with some of the bigger councils, but I don't really see how they are with the smaller ones. Um, however, like, and, and to be honest, those t ads on TV ads look embarrassing. Um, I don't know who the hell come up with that? Um, but um, it's, I'm really pleased to see that Tonkin, you've got Tonkin Taylor on board because, you know, I mean, really we are a duplicate of, you know, Grey and Westport. We're all in the same situation, you know, as far as population versus rating base goes. So I guess, you know, the, this is one of those times where rather than working on our own, you know, we should significantly be working alongside them as well. Um, now, um, just bringing up about the um, Paki Waitara building, um, to be honest with you, my biggest concern at the moment is um, how soon can we get the work done over there? Because I'm actually just really conscious that at the moment we've got a library that sits there that we're paying a ridiculous amount to lease every year um, that's got a lease expiring in two years. And are we going to be able to get the work done that we need to? Because that money we're paying for exorbitantly on a lease of the library is far better off going into the bank for the mortgage on the Pakil Waitara building. Um, yeah, so um, I'm really interested to know that, you know, timeline-wise, is that going to be possible? Um, and I did actually highlight is... Um, Jane alluded around the um, an agreement has been reached on the options for the building. Um, I thought I thought part of that was still part of a discussion around what would be going into the building. I didn't know that we'd like a, it's been a resolution that's been decided that on everything that was going to go into the. So we haven't brought anything back to council in terms of this is business case is going to work. Yeah. It's all finalised the structural elements that need to go in there. Right. So that before we can do anything further, we have to structural elements complete design and cost it. Right. So that's where we're at at the moment. Okay. Well, yeah. So my biggest concern at the moment is we are paying significantly high lease on the library and the sooner we can get the library out of that building and back into our own building, um, which would obviously offset mortgage payments considerably, I think, the better. 
just to remind councillors that we still have a challenge with this building, so that building may be a solution for staffing until this building is upgraded as well. Oh. So there's a, there's a double edged sword here at the moment. Which, okay, may mean that that's. And once we get the timeline final, I'll share with Yeah, that would be cool. Um, and the other thing that I just wanted to um, actually just bring up, um, and, 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 and perhaps through what you've mentioned here, um, it's going back actually now to the website because all of this information, like you, you mentioned about the successful for the TIF funding, like I would really like it if our website um, could keep as updated as possibly on the successes of when we're applying for external funding, because I think people out in the community will be surprised at the hard work that also goes on within council to apply and get external funding and all those extra projects. Um, we, we talked about this two or three months ago, you know, but actually having something that's like a, a live running document that we can refer people back to and say, hey, you know, to date this year, the council not only are doing all of their day to day stuff, but they are receiving and all of this extra funding that's going for all these other things that are out in your area, you know, and the projects that are being ticked off. Um, and in fact, Bruce, uh, sorry. His Worship, um, your, even your report that you actually did, that we all have a copy of, that alluded to all of what we had progressed on in the last two years. Um, is it possible for that to be um, actually updated and put onto the website? I'll have to discuss that with the chief Yeah, yeah, because, you know, like, that's all really valuable information and it's just another opportunity for uh, for the council to be able to deservedly plug all of that all of that extra hard work that I don't think sometimes the community is aware of that is actually going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That would be the only thing like other thing I'd say. Thank you very much for the very extensive report. Councillor Davis, did you wrap it up? Okay. Um you just um Thanks, Simon. On the uh, 2.52, the Quan Street uh, extension, those um, culverts, there's five rows of uh, large concrete culverts. They're all from strong water. It's, geez, it's a huge amount, isn't it? There's a creek across the road that comes flying through <laughs> the road. And the thing has been undersized for quite a few years. It's massive, eh? Fairly, fairly impressive. <laughs> um, and the other one is the uh, 2.6 uh, Casque toilets extension, yep. uh, bike racks, and uh, e bike charging station. Do we have a, um, a, uh, a concept of that at all? Yes, we did in the application. I don't have it with me. Oh, okay. I can show you. Oh, yeah. it's always, it's right. um, if you can picture where the playground is, there's a bunch of trees. Yep. It's going to be on the uh, internal side of the, the, the tree beside the skate park. I think. Use the lobby view section. Yeah. Have we, have we decided on that, have we? Council? Well, that's a question. I'm not. In terms of a concept, this has been, um, this has already been part of an LTP in previous years. So it's been on, the, on last year's budget to do these toilets. Oh, okay. There's, there's room to tweak. Oh, I think. And, yeah, but of course, you can't tweak it to get the money. Oh, I'm starting there. Thank, thank you. Okay. Um, and the other one was the Hectic flood extension. Sorry. The, sorry, the Hectic flood uh, erosion project. Can I yes. speak on that? Um, so, uh, thanks. Uh, thank you. I was going to present this uh, by way of general business, but I've been asked by the mayor to follow up after the chief executive report. You would have um, viewed the copy of the West Coast Regional Council's Hokitika proposed rating district and proposed works, plus a copy of the peak depth map showing 
the low-lying areas. I'm not here to discuss the engineering and operation logistics of this. My purpose is to outline matters of significance because we will need to work together and support the West Coast Regional Council in their process to protect Hokitika from erosion and flooding. I have very good knowledge of some of the major catchments behind Hokitika. The Crop River catchment not only records the highest rainfall in New Zealand, but it is listed as one of the top five on the planet. The crop flows into the Whitkin, which in turn flows into the Hokitika River. If we have a downpour in the catchments I have just mentioned, similar to the recent Buller and mid Canterbury events, the risk of flooding to this town will be catastrophic. There will be no escaping flooding to the residential and central business districts, Western milk products, rest homes, the list is endless. Not only would we, this potential event be a disaster for this community, but a huge effect to the region. There is a plan to protect the town. Now is the time where we have to work together. We need for unity. We need for solidarity. We are reliant on the West Coast Regional Council and we need to not only show support, but to give it. In my lifetime, I have been witness to events on the West Coast where people have lost property, belongings, and their loved ones. After the event, the finger gets pointed with statements, this should never have happened, and that should have happened. In Westport, we have seen aspects of, of this behaviour unfolding. Therefore, I'm strongly advocating that we act now. We need to work together. And I'm strongly in favour of getting behind with a plan to protect this town and its people who are reliant on us to do so. So to this end, we need to set up an action plan, working alongside the West Coast Regional Council. Of course, there will be a need to include other organisations and border to achieve that purpose. Thank you. What do we need to do as the District Council can to, to help the Regional Council? I don't understand that. Um, support them. Yeah, but like, how though? Like, well, I need to, we need to put this into an, an action plan and we need to discuss it on a regular basis. Yeah, look, I'm not saying that the wall shouldn't be built or whatever, but what I'm saying is this is the Regional Council's job. I, nothing to do with us. I, I, I understand that, but what I'm sort of saying... This here mm -hmm. is a threat. And I don't want to be like in Westport, pointing the finger, saying, oh, God, oh, it's nothing to do with us. That was your responsibility. Like we're, we're in... Well, yeah, yeah. Look, I, I, no, I, I totally get it and I understand hope tickers at risk and it's cool. So it's friends and, and it's the same thing. We're going to set up one for hope ticker, we've got to set up one for friends. Like, I, I, I'm not saying we don't support the regional council or whatever, but ultimately, ultimately they're leading the charge of the chivalry project. They've got to do it. I don't, I just, I can't comprehend what it is that we as the district council have got to do with it. I think uh, conveying, putting it, uh, putting it up each month, putting it on the actions and conveying our feelings to the regional council so that they keep the heat on. Yeah, no, I don't see how we're doing, we're doing that. The, um, two things. I, I, 
Obviously, I think it's unfortunate that the seawall is tied in with the um, stop beams. <coughs> in my view, the seawall is another man altogether, and his knee jerk reaction wasn't necessary because that erosion on that beach comes and goes, has done for 160 years, and will do for another millennia in the future without having to panic and put a man made structure on the right. Uh, uh, um, in the way of the town's, one of the town's greatest assets. Um, but that's another matter on the, the seawall. The one for the, the stock banks um, is, um, is imperative, and, and um, I agree 100% with the mayor on this. Um, there's been um, dragging of feet, there's been, uh, you know, been delays with the consenting, and et cetera, and um, that map that's been put forward um, Showing that uh, what a one hundred a one in one hundred year flood would do with the Hoga ticket was frightening. Mm. It needs to be published in the paper so the people can actually see it. I'm going to give this to you then. <laughs> <laughs> Not to me. <laughs> well, your no, staff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it does need to be published, and people so people can can realise the gravity of it. And um, there's no excuse and there's no need for um, mucking around uh, on this. Um, and it only takes one decent storm to come in all of a sudden and whammo, we're in deep water. water. And, um, yeah, and that, that's not being um, alarmist at all. It's being realistic and, um, yeah. Um, I saw some comment from um, Durham Hill, I was the editor, the editor um, and Durham said he recalls back in the 1990s standing on the, on the stop being cut by the Livingston Street um, and the water was within inches of overlapping and it's been topped up a little bit since then but not enough. And um, it's still a weak point, and the um, yep, the water will surge through there like uh, no one's business, and there'll be lots of gnashing of teeth. So, let's get on with it. It takes this council to, to um, kickstart that and push it along, um, whatever it takes, and do it. I mean, I apologize for really just you know, thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other comments before we move to Simon? Very good report. Thank you. Very good. Let's go. Let's go. I think in line with um, what Tank is talking about, I totally agree, Paul, that it's a shame that the seawall and the river protection have been lumped in together because I think they probably should be separate. Um, certainly, my concerns aren't so much what do we do about it as the planning and the research that goes into. What we're going to do and not just go build a wall. It's got to be done properly if, it's, if that's the best way to do it. And get proper research into that. Um, what, what, what I'd like to see if done? those two, two tasks can be separated. So, just, I mean, this is why I went to talk to Regional Council earlier this week with Fiona. Um, the challenge is funding, right? Funding for both projects won't cover what they want to do, what it sounds like. So they don't know what the new design will be at a bigger and how much that will cost. And until they have that number, they don't know how much they can spend on the river. But I think, like I alluded to, the priority one region can be done ASAP, no matter what the outcome of the seawall one. I'll take that back to Regional Council on your behalf and just make a, make a statement in terms of prioritising the hot spots on the river protection works as a starting point. Because it has to be done anyway. So. Could you find out why they're not just using the design that we've got at the present time that protects the city? Oh, they need a design scoped up properly for the consenting process. Right. I'll just ask a question on the funding. What, you know, my concern is that the funding gets lost. You know, is that a genuine concern? Because I would have assumed that under the funding agreement that they signed, works would have had to be another way. Um, yeah. If that money disappears, it will be on the regional council. So, is it worth us actually? Like I get what Tank is saying about um, working together and stuff, but ultimately they will have the. You know, 
they will have the control over what happens. So can we as a council be resolving and writing to them to express our concern around the delays? I mean, we haven't seen any, any concepts or plans. We haven't seen any timelines. And we certainly, I mean, it's a concern that that money disappears. We, we've got skin in the game with the financial contributions that we've put forward on behalf of our residents. And if we, um, if we sort of just sit back and then, you know, and it all goes belly up um, because, you know, I think we, we need to take some of that responsibility too. So, you know, my thinking is around the river protection, that should be underway. And I can't understand what what's the gap. Is it a lack of resourcing within the regional council in terms of their planning staff or changing? Yeah, I don't, I don't actually know. And, and now Hadley leaving to go to Australia in August, you know, is that a genuine concern? Why are there no designs? Why is it not being done? How can we help? So that's, that's right. Yeah. A, a letter to uh, regional council as a result, of, as an action point here. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, and just, and just, to, just to follow on, I mean, I, I have the same concerns. Like, this is a conversation that we had a long time ago um, that we were working with the regional council with way back then. And, you know, like, oh, in, in the instance, um, particularly um, with what um, Council Davidson's talked about, you know, this does need to, you know, we do have an obligation to our community mm. to keep them safe. Mm. And if that means that we've got to stress an urgency around this work to be, and the paperwork to be done as quickly as possible, um, I think that, yeah, it's, it's absolutely necessary. I would not like to see us sitting here in six months' time going, Point oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think what's really important is that we, we're saying it's regional council's responsibility. We said exactly the same on the Waiho River, and we're now being sued for $30 million for the second defendant. So make no bones about it, the legal risk is there. It won't be 30 million if it comes into the town. A lot more than that. The risk is there if we do the wrong moves as well, if we put the wrong sort of protection in. I still come back to the fact that it's got to be the proper planning. Happy for a letter to go to the regional council, depending on what it says. I, I think a strong letter, and, uh, and it's got to be done. It's not just like we want these walls, both of them, put in as soon as possible, because I don't agree with that. I want the background done properly first. And that was um, one of the conditions for our, um, yeah. our constitution was that all the consents are in place beforehand and not do it and say sorry later. That's why I'm wondering with the, you know, we're 12 months down the track from making that decision around funding and we put very clear conditions on our funding, which were around planning. There's been 12 months to undertake planning, 12 months to submit resource consents. <laughs> Yeah. You know, I'm concerned them saying they're going to go to the minister to try and get the minister to call the project in. Good luck. You know, <laughs> uh, you know, I just, well, it's... Well, they do. But, you know, they're regional and the feds are involved in a struggle with an argument that doesn't want to go ahead. So there's a process that we've got to go through. To be fair, the minority group, we don't know that how small or large they are and they've got some very good points there. And they're not saying they don't want it to go ahead. They're saying that they want it to be done properly. That's, that, that's what I'm saying. We, we've got to work together on it. You know, there's got to be unity on it. So that's, um, that, that's the key to it. So how do we get that, Hanka? Um, we've got, well, we've got to talk to each other. We, you know, yep. we've got, it's like, you know me, Jane. It's um, like I've played a lot of uh, rugby every days, you know, and... Um, and on the team teamwork, you know, we 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 played well after the game of footy. Everyone went their different ways. They got different personalities. They did their own thing. But we come together at training, and and we worked together. And we played on the Saturday, and the good teamwork was there. In fact, we did play well as a team, as you know, Paul. <laughs> but um, but. You know, it's teamwork. It's working together. Okay. All right, let's keep moving. Um, thank you for that, Simon. Going back to uh, the agenda.
Just an analogy. <laughs> he beat you in rugby. This is what we're getting. Now, in all seriousness, what was the? Just, uh, are we directing that you take the rights to regional council? Is that the, was that the action point you worship? We are right to the regional council. I don't think we've been specific enough about what the issue is going to change. The leader's going to say, get on. We need it done. We, we need the process to be. Good point. We, we can talk about process all day long, but if we're sitting downtown, it's up to our chest. I don't want to be me at that time. And if we put a rock ball in that isn't, doesn't do the job, and in 20 years of time, we've got to redo it, it's going to be the same thing. The we pointed, we've got to make sure that we listen. But to don't they have a responsibility as the regional council to ensure they get the expertise mm -hmm. in? Anyhow, I mean, that's. That's part of what their job is, and that's why those, you know, university trained people that they're going to get um, are going to be and providing with, them. Without the pushback that has happened. <laughs> so Becca has only been involved, I believe, because of the pushback. Okay, but at least if they've got Becca involved, surely. I mean, I would think no job, no matter how big or small it is, um, has to go through a process and get expertise um, there to know what the best outcome is as far as what they've got to build. And we okay. have to trust in those people. Okay, can, can we can we move Can I invite so one, one more? Uh, I was just going to say that in my view that the, the answer would be to, um, and to the Chief Executive hinted that the, there wasn't enough money for, for both. Yeah. Potentially, which, which is yes, interesting. The um, is separate, separate from that. You, you know what the priority is, and that ought to be the focus. And um, and whether, whether that other one comes to pass is, is another matter altogether. But when the, while that funding is there, as um, um, as Councillor Martin says, don't don't uh, let it slip. Um, yeah, would someone like to move that the quarterly report for the Chief Executive dated 29th of July 2021 be received? Councillor Cohen, second. Councillor Martin, who's in favour? Councillor Cohen, second. Councillor Martin, who's in favour? Aye. Councillor Martin, who's in favour? Aye. Councillor Martin, who's in favour? Aye. We've gone to the next one, which is the projects and carrying forwards for the 21 22. Leslie. Thank you, Chief Executive. Um, well, the object of this report is to obtain approval to carry out the funding from previous council years to the current year for the projects in the list attached as appendix one. Um, I just want to provide some clarity around this, um, the projects in this listing. Um, ideally, um, we would be able to show you the exact state of all these projects, but this is from a financial point of view. However, uh, I'm sure most of you will realise that our project actually goes through many stages from start to finish, some of them before spend actually occurs. So the majority, if not most, of these projects will have been started It's just going through the planning stages, which can be quite extensive. Um, also, the committed funds, which most, again, most of these projects will have had purchase orders raised and funds committed Project. So I personally see these as more being work in progress rather than being classified as um, carryovers. So we're just seeking approval based on that for the carryover of these fundings. Thanks, Leslie. Um, Minister of Real, is there any serious questions? Oh, there's just a couple of things in here, and while it's here that really annoy me. Um, the likes of the Ross and the Water Eye Playground, I mean. So. Um, and the other thing that concerns me too is this elderly housing, the glazing and the upgrades and the window replacement. I mean, that should have already been done as soon as the funding was through. I mean, it's... Just a point to wish on that one. So there's no solution on that to request that fund originally. That fund we carried over past the level of the transfer of the assets. Yeah, well, I totally get that, but I mean, it's not helping anyone now, is it?
Yeah, so, no. <laughs> sorry, that was that, <laughs> that, that's over. You've got no um, pushback from me on any of that. Um, I'm just, um, I, I also share the same concerns about some of the projects actually not being completed that are not projects that, that, that need to take more than one financial year. And I appreciate that we've got a, we had a huge year, you know, a massive year for council and projects and a lot that came in that we weren't full, we didn't forecast. So I accept that we're in the position we're in. I wonder what the projects proposed to not be carry for, carry, carried forward, sorry. Um, saw the website presentation and I wondered why would we not be rolling the eyesight forward? Why is that, is that just, why would we not be doing an eyesight website? Uh, that's not what council is about, it's up to um, that's an information. So some of those aspects, for example, the eyesight was requested by Destination Richmond two years ago, we carried for one more year, so they're not engaging. In so they don't want to do it, they don't want to do a website. No. No. And um, the pavilions proposed to be demolished anyway, so that makes sense. Capping, they are, and I guess the asset team have all said that those requirements aren't, those pumping upgrades aren't needed. Yeah, I've been through this. Yeah, 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 yeah. So there's no, um, there's no additional pumping work that needs to be done in, in Hokitika. No, there is. There's definitely work in stormwater. I think well, after a review of the stormwater going back a couple of years now, we reprioritise once we give us more data. Um, once we the camera down and look what's going on, we've actually changed the whole scope of stormwater management. Okay. That's good to hear. Mm. And Thanks. you'll see uh, there's more foot analysis happening uh, starting next week, I think, in terms of smoke uh, testing, etc. cetera, dry testing. Thanks. Nothing else, sir? So, I can invite, uh, sorry, I can invite the council to uh, move for A, council procedure report, B, the council approve for carryover of funds for the projects itemised in appendix one to the financial year 21 22, and C, the council approve for future allocation of funds for specific purposes. Councillor yeah. Davidson, thank you. Right. Second, Councillor Kennedy. Those in favour? Those right. against? Okay. Thanks, Lisa. Thank you, Lisa. Now we're on to, uh, we just do one minister, uh, uh, and that is, uh, I'd like to move that uh, we continue past the two hour break time frame and continue to the end of the confidential session. Uh, we will consent. Do I have a second or two? Yep. Thank you. Those in favour? Aye. Those against? Yep. Thanks. 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 Yep. Which is uh, Victoria Jane Price. And Councillor Neil has seconded that. All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Next item on the, on the agenda, which is the ANZ amendment to the last amendment, and that's getting an additional staff member. As a nominated secretary, does any councillor have an issue with that? Okay, so I'd like to, to move that council confirm and seal being affixed to the ANZ amendment to master mandate as listed in the agenda. Do I move me? Thanks, Jane. Councillor Neil, seconded. Councillor Kenny, those in favour? Aye. Aye. Thank you for that. Uh, the next item is item 10. Which is the New Zealand Coastal Restoration Trust annual conference for March 2022. It's been requested by Councillor Jane Neal. Jane, the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, so, since that was put in, it's now going to be in Auckland next year. But 
looking to hold it down here in March 2023. So just really asking council for support and principle mainly. Um, of course, financial support as well would always be welcome. So just briefly, there's about 63 groups nationwide. The conference would have around 100 attendees or participants. The advantage or benefits to us, um, there'll be case studies done locally, which can be feedback to council, access to experts on how to most economically deal with coastal change, coastal erosion um, being the hot topic. And there's workshops that council and the public can participate in. So yeah, I've been asked to bring that along just to get support in principle for it. This point. From my point of view, I would support any council that goes out and encourages a conference going to a town. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Any, any, uh, any discussion on that council? Yes. Um, I think it's great attracting any conference to the community. It's awesome. So thank you. Um, I'm just reflecting on a framework to you know, the designated person to actually communicate with and just reflecting on that experience with Matariki, like, where does it best sit? Is it best sitting with the council and Destination Westland or both or neither? And if it sits best with council, who would be the key liaison person in, inside this building? And if it sat with Destination Westland, who would be the key liaison person? Because, um, Often there's operational components of something like that. So we can attract it, but then there's actually like, okay, well, we need to do a street closure, we need to be on the beach, or we need to book the you know, all these things that that happen, which I'm sensing is kind of bringing it to council. It's like we endorse it in principle, but do we have the capacity to pick these sorts of things up? Does it sit within our community services function? Do we support Destination Western to pick up smaller events by way of financial contribution or I'm just I hate to think that we could lose an opportunity because we haven't got our own head around where it best sits. I think in the, uh, in the first instance um, uh, council is offering its full support to council and to bring the New Zealand Coastal Restoration Trust in conference to Hokitika 22 or 23, or 24. Um, but the wider issue of where these things fit within the organisation, I think, is something for another day. Because it's something that the Chief Executive needs to consider. Yeah. Thank you. I, I, uh, I'd just like to know a little bit more about what was this group? Um, I believe I've got a very good website. I haven't seen it myself, so some of this information I just got this morning. Um, yeah, so go look on the website. There's no urgency because it's been pushed out to 2023 now. So maybe it's something that can, we can look into. I can send the link around to the website. Mm -hmm. uh, Sending right. uh, more information out for sure. And Simon, if you can keep it on your radar, but in the future, yeah, as to where it goes. Bearing in mind how long it takes to get a canary yeah. crossing in place. <laughs> it's too soon, Jane. Too soon. Okay. Uh, I'd invite a council to move that uh, council move into public excluded. Council Kennedy, Council Davidson, thank you. Um, and to the members of the public that are uh, that are watching, thank you for joining us for this meeting. We really appreciate the fact that you're interested, and um, 